Guys, welcome to Crypto Insight. I've been a professional options trader for 20 years. And about a year ago, I switched my focus from equity options to crypto options. Why? Because of the huge volatility and opportunity in the space. Trading Bitcoin has allowed me to multiply my capital in a safe way. And in these videos, I will give you the benefit of my experience and insight into how I'm reading the crypto vol market and using options to either hedge or speculate on future expected moves in the crypto space. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and I hope you find this content useful. Thanks. <music> Okay, it's that time again. Let's talk crypto. Um, Bitcoin crashed over the weekend. Do you want to call it a crash? 20 to 25% over a day. Yeah, that's pretty much a crash. That qualifies as a crash. Um, so let's talk about, you know, maybe what drove that, what's been going on. So the main, the main excuse being used um, for that crash in Bitcoin over the weekend um, was this unsubstantiated report of a US Treasury crackdown against money laundering using crypto. Um, other cited reasons have been uh, excess leverage in speculative positioning from retail accounts. Apparently some retail accounts are allowed 100 to one leverage. So, you know, don't be overly surprised if you, if you get liquidated when using that kind of leverage, especially in something high vol like Bitcoin. Um, low weekend liquidity, you know, we often see the big moves happen at the weekend when liquidity drops off a bit. Um, there was a big outage in China, which, were, which hit a load of Bitcoin miners and took the hash rate down. Uh, and also Turkey's been banning the use of crypto for payments. So definitely a fair amount of bad news out there, um, potentially. Uh, and any one of these could have been the trigger for, for this kind of move. And then positioning and leverage as these things get unwound, you know, it, it can kind of feed on itself, right? So the carnage in the Delta One market for crypto, uh, for Bitcoin specifically, created about $10 billion in liquidations, yeah? Um, however, you know, what's the flip side of that? I mean, we have recovered, we've staged a relatively decent bounce. Um, so despite all this FUD, F-U-D, it's the acronym that the crypto community use uh, to mean fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, so anytime there's any bad news or bad press about Bitcoin, these guys always call it FUD, right? And, uh, but anyway, the, the other side of the argument is that there's been an independent study uh, researching the use of crypto for criminal activity and that found that the percentage uh, of illicit transactions is minimal, right? And it's less than like 1% of uh, all Bitcoin transactions and it's falling from, from you know, a few years back. So, um, and if you compare that to say illicit activity through traditional financial intermediaries, that ranges between two to 4% of global GDP, which is massive. So, you know, this paper is, is arguably, you know, saying the data doesn't really justify the, any, any of those type of actions to go after Bitcoin in terms of, you know, being used for illegal activity. Um, and then also, you know, you got to look at the US and what their motives would be. And uh, the paper also suggests that if the US was to go after Bitcoin, then they would risk severe geopolitical repercussions, right? With regards to China, because they're so huge in Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining, et cetera. Um, and so rather than doing that, they're better off just leveraging the new blockchain technology for the US's benefit, right? Um, and, and I think that's probably more likely as well, given the large scale adoption we've seen from US companies as well. You know, look at PayPal, Square, you know, you've got Fidelity. Over, over the last year, all that adoption, you know, it, it's hard to see them going after this space too aggressively given the size of the players that have entered that space right over the last year. 
there'd be quite a big backlash, right? So, so that's kind of what's been going on in terms of the news flow in the space. Um, if, if we want to look at the charts on Bitcoin, um, so bring up this chart here. So you've got, you know, I drew out some sort of Fib confluence levels to see where the, where the support should be uh, off that most recent high. And lo and behold, we bounced pretty much right off the first one around 51. Um, there are there are lower down levels at like 47 and 42 and a half. And, you know, if we do get a retest of the lows or even a break slightly lower down, I'd be looking at what happens in around those confluence zones um, to see what the momentum is doing and see if that's offering an entry point to, to kind of buy more. Right. You know, I'm right now I'm feeling relatively well hedged. I've got a few puts. I'm sure a few calls. I've got my risk reversals in place around my core holdings. Um, and I would look at places to take profit on those hedges if we were to reach any of these lower support levels that I've got marked on the chart there, basically. So that's kind of where what the price is doing in Bitcoin. What else? Um, Ether also bounced off levels, um, confluence levels on Ether. I had uh, 21 and a half and 20 and a half. So it bounced off the second one this time. So Ether was a little bit more violent on the way down. But, you know, holding quite well, if you look at the performance of Ether versus Bitcoin of late, Ether has been outperforming. Uh, so we look at where the spread is, you know, it had a nice ratchet up from sort of 0.03 all the way up to 0.04. And it's kind of hanging around there, right? So even in this latest sell off, Ether hasn't significantly underperformed Bitcoin. So it's holding that outperformance that it's kind of managed to do over the last sort of um, 20 odd days, right? So. That's pretty encouraging for ETH. Um, what about options markets? Uh, so options markets in crypto have remained quite orderly despite these wild moves, right? So implied volatility had already moved up. So if we look at uh, some charts on the on, on the on the vol analytics for crypto. So here's a chart showing uh, what short dated um, sort of implied and realized volatility have done. So you can see that in that sort of weekend move, you had, well, we started to break higher um, and where you already saw a move up sort of last week in, in short dated implies up to around 80, that started to calm down. And then we spiked back up to that level at around 80, right? But these are levels that we had kind of already seen middle of last week. And now we're a bit softer again, back to kind of the mid seventies, right? So 30 day, like short dated implied vol, kind of not massively higher, even after that move. Obviously realized vol has had an uptick, you know, of kind of around what, 52 up to 64. So about 12 vol point popping realized uh, on the back of those wild swings, but nothing crazy, nothing out of the ordinary. We're, we're not talking like 20, 30 vol point type moves, right? So, so re realized vol, and implied vol kind of in check there. Um, the term structure. You can see here the term structure. So I've got basically what it looked like a week ago, what it looked like two days ago, and what it looks like today. So you can see the yellow curve is what it was a week ago. So vol's fairly elevated given that we were breaking to the upside. Now, after the crash, so at the weekend, we had medium term vol like shifted lower, but the front end had spiked. So you can see the super short dated stuff expiring in like a week or two flipped to actually trade higher than the, the one, two month stuff, right? So that's a, that inversion, that backwardation of vol happens when the market has a sudden shock. That happened, that's the red curve, and then now that's all collapsed as we've kind of found a level and we stabilized and you see you know the, those really short dated options are back down towards 60 vol and the rest of the curves kind of anywhere between 70 and 80 and it's quite flat so that's kind of but overall from a week ago vols are actually lower right so that's quite interesting given the type of moves you've seen for vols to actually be lower than they were a week ago maybe quite surprising right so that's kind of what um term structure is doing uh, the, the, the main repricing has really come from SKU. So if I bring up the SKU, 
So this kind of shows you kind of on the week what, what various maturity skew has done. So it's showing you that at the start of the week, you know, you pretty much had skew around sort of 10, 10 to 15 vols in favor of call options. So makes sense, right? Market is breaking to the upside, people are willing to pay a premium for the upside for the calls, right? As you can see, as we move throughout the week and into the weekend, the, the front, the seven day maturity options have absolutely exploded for puts. So the skew flipped from minus 15 to highs of plus 30 and now probably plus 20 for seven day options, right? So very much demand for super short dated puts and for protection from this crash. And then even if you look at the 30 day and 90 day stuff, so the one to three month area, they're all shifting towards, you know, a more neutral skew, right? So, you know, that gray line's gone back to around zero, even the red line not too far from zero. So all that's saying is we're getting a more symmetrical skew surface for calls and puts. So it's starting to look more like a smile than being skewed towards the calls. And uh, you can see that in this chart here. So here you can see a week ago, the, the surface was that yellow surface, okay? And you basically have, you know, what was a bit of a funky shaped surface where you had this extra sort of bid for the, um, for the call options. But what's happened? So you can see here, these call options have dropped dramatically, yeah? They've gone from about 85 vol to 75 vol. So they've lost about, so minus 10 points here. Whereas these put options have only dropped by about five, okay? And so what we're left with is the purple smile, which is a lot more symmetrical. It doesn't have this weird sort of skew to the, on the call side where there's like a premium being paid for those, so those short dated calls. So it's much more smooth and much more smile-like surface, right? So that, that's just saying the balance between demand, supply and demand for calls and puts has become a little bit more symmetrical, yeah? And that's kind of it, right? So um, that's basically, that's basically what's been going on in the crypto market. So for me, you know, vol, vol reaction fairly muted, signaling, you know, no real major panic from the people who play in that space. And the market makers were already kind of prepared for more realized volatility, albeit to the upside. Now that that crash has kind of happened, yes, the surface is more symmetrical. The tail risks are on both the upside and the downside, maybe for the next month or two. That's kind of how the market sees it. But for now, we're consolidating. We've retraced some of that crash. Um, you know, hard, we'll see what happens next, right? If, like I say, for me, I've got hedges in place. I didn't lose any sleep uh, over that, that market dropping. Um, I'd be looking to potentially take profit on hedges if we got into those, that 47,000 area. So that's kind of what I would like to see happen. But if it doesn't happen and we, and we just keep recharging back to, back to the moon, then, you know, that's what crypto does. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm well positioned for that. So happy to see that happen, right? And uh, yeah, that's it for this week. Thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this content, please subscribe to our channel, give the video a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. I'd also encourage you to sign up for a free trial to our live and interactive Macro Insight Zoom call. As part of our trading community, as well as the call, you'll also get access to our Telegram chat and our weekly market reports. To find out more, you can also connect with us on the socials. All the links are at our website, www.options-insight.com. Thanks.